Shrekki and his friends are having a barbecue within the security estate of the nature reserve, where Oha resides. They've positioned themselves near Oha's apartment in her parking spot, hoping to catch her eye whenever she enters or leaves her apartment. Tiriki is resolute in capturing Mani's interest. So, guys, I've been thinking about Oha a lot lately. She really seems to be the one I've been looking for. I mean, she's educated, morally sound, financially stable, and ticks all the boxes. Absolutely, Tayariki. Aroha is quite a catch. I've heard she's even from an offshoot tribe within our own. It's like fate brought her to us. And did you know she's a devout Christian? Plus, no kids and she lives alone. It's like the stars are aligning for you, Tayariki. Indeed, Monica, but we need to be sure. I can't afford any mistakes here. She's going to be my wife, and I want to know everything about her. Well, I have an idea. What if we rent an apartment directly opposite hers, right here within the security estate of this nature reserve? That way, we can monitor her every move and ensure she's really the person you think she is. Genius. We'll have an excuse to spend time nearby and observe her without being too obvious. Manaya, I like your plan. Let's get that apartment rented. Time to do some due diligence, gentlemen. Tiyariki rents an apartment directly opposite Aroha's, and he gets two of his spies to live there for a few months. The trio stands outside the apartment building, as a person walks away having rented the apartment opposite Aroha's. Perfect. Now I have a reason to be around. You're becoming quite the undercover investigator, Tiyariki. We've got this covered, Saya. Over the course of a few months, Ari, Tiyariki, and his friends are frequently seen having barbecues outside the apartment building, waiting at Aroha from a distance. Who are these people? They seem friendly, always having fun across the way. One day, Ari, Tiyariki, decides to approach Aroha. He leaves his bodyguards behind and walks over. Hello, I'm Tiyariki. I've seen you around quite often. Figured I should introduce myself. Hi, Tiyariki. I'm Aroha. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too, Aroha. You know, my friends have been living here for a while. It's a small world, isn't it? Definitely. It's been great seeing you and your friends out here enjoying yourselves. Ari, Tiyariki, and Aroha continue to exchange pleasantries during their encounters. Aroha seems intrigued by Tiyariki. Tiyariki, what an interesting and unique name. What a beautiful woman. She's absolutely gorgeous. Over time, Prince Ari and his friends become a familiar sight to Aroha on Fridays and weekends. There's a mutual respect between them. There's Aroha. It's always nice to see these guys having a good time. Makes the place lively. I wonder who Tiariki is. I have noticed that he is always surrounded by at least two bodyguards. His bodyguards wear unique uniforms. I think Tiariki must be an important person in these parts. He's a nice guy. I wish him well. One day, Ari Tiariki stops visiting the complex. Aroha notices his absence but doesn't dwell on it. At that time, Aroha was also on the verge of losing her job due to office politics, nepotism, other, isms and an economic collapse. Tiariki hasn't been around lately. I hope everything's okay. Unbeknownst to Aroha, Prince Tiariki had lost his father, the king. The prince is dealing with his grief and responsibilities. At this stage, Aroha was unaware of the fact that Tiariki was a prince, and the heir apparent to the throne of the great kingdom of Te Basilea. Lord, be with him and help him to rise above any situation that he may be facing. In Jesus' name, I pray. Little does Aroha know, Tiariki is facing a personal loss that has kept him away. Have you seen Aroha's apartment? It's unbelievable. Yeah, I heard she owns everything without any loans or debts. And she acquired everything in less than two years. How's that possible? Did you see the video that Philip took of Aroha's place? Yes, 
It's not fair. I mean, she's from a different race and look at her, living better than all of us. Good morning, everyone. Hi, hey Aroha. Nice day, isn't it? Absolutely. I hope you all have a great day ahead. Later, in Aroha's apartment. I can't believe Aroha has all this. And she doesn't even go out or party like we do. She's probably hiding something. No one can afford all this on their own, especially from her background. Look at this, guys. I took these photos of Aroha's place. We need to show others what she's up to. How is she able to afford purchasing valuable household property while also working towards buying a new car? Especially considering her modest income. Don't overlook the fact that Aroha lives independently, without children and without debt. Therefore, $2,000 is a substantial amount for a single person who doesn't dine out or drink alcohol. Even though we make more than twice her salary, we indulge in pricey restaurants, nightlife, have kids to support, and allocate a significant portion of our income to servicing bank loan interest. Are you defending her? No, I am just stating facts. Still, how can someone like her lead a better and more comfortable life than ours? Chush, I think Aroha is coming with the snacks. I only came here to see all this for myself. I don't like these team building sessions that are held at our colleagues' houses. Chush. Back in the office. What's the meaning of this, showing me pictures of Aroha's belongings? Well, Dad, I mean boss, we just thought you should know what she's doing. Are you implying something, that she's doing something illegal? No, not really, but it's just strange, you know. She's not like us. How can someone like her live in such a nice well-furnished, clean and spacious home? That's enough. I don't care about her race or how she chooses to spend her money. We don't pay her much but she still outshines you all maybe. You could learn something from her, and maybe God is truly with her. If so, I wonder what it means for us since we're taking advantage of her. Anyway, she's an exceptional employee and that's what matters. A few weeks later. Aroha, we appreciate your hard work, but we've decided to make some changes in the department. These changes will affect you financially. In short, we'll be cutting your salary in half. Some of our clients aren't paying us on time hence, the pay cuts and new workloads. Changes, but I've been giving my best and meeting all targets, all of my clients pay on time. Yes, but sometimes change is necessary for growth. Aroha's apartment, evening. Lord, I don't understand why this is happening, but I trust in your plan. Help me find strength in this situation. My boss has been encouraging me to find another job. He says that I am overqualified for my position, I don't fit into the work culture and I have openly refused to be subservient to anyone despite my race. Help me Lord, I surrender all to you. Another successful project completed on time. Praise God. Aroha, you continue to impress everyone here. You're truly remarkable. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words. You know, Aroha, I've noticed how exceptional you are. We could make quite the team. I'm flattered, but my focus is on my work. Have you seen the way senior manager looks at Aroha? It's like he's obsessed. I heard he's dating the boss's daughter. He can't be serious about Aroha, can he? Also, why would he choose her over us? I don't know. I am only saying what I have observed. Aroha, you're missing out on a great opportunity by rejecting me. Senior manager, I value professionalism and my faith. I'm here to work, not to entertain personal interests. We've decided to implement a new system, and we'll be forming a team to lead the project. I have extensive experience in the current system and can contribute effectively to this project. We've already selected the team, Aroha. Thanks for your interest. Aroha's conversation with the owner. Aroha, 
It seems like our company culture might not align with your values. I've always upheld professionalism and respect, regardless of differences. Well, sometimes people need to adapt. I've always been adaptable while staying true to my principles. You'll have to give in to my demands if you're to stay in this company. Remember that I own almost half of this company. Plus I am dating the owner's daughter so everything will be mine one day. I won't be disrespected or pushed aside because of my race, gender, or background. I've earned my place here. We didn't exclude you because of that. Yet. You excluded me from discussions and expected me to be subservient. That won't happen. Aroha, you've challenged our authority, and I won't tolerate that. I've simply stood up for myself and my principles. If that threatens you, then perhaps it's time to reevaluate. You think a person like you can challenge my family? I'm challenging actions, not people. My race, gender, or background don't determine my worth. Lord, I lay my work situation at your feet. It's been challenging, and I'm at a loss. Please guide me and turn things around for my good. I've poured my heart into this, and I trust in your plan. Aroha, I am aware of your struggles. Trust in me, for I will make a way where there seems to be no way. Your faith and perseverance will not go unnoticed. Aroha's acceptance to the prestigious university. I have been accepted to the prestigious university for my masters. This is truly a blessing. How did you manage that? Nobody from our company or even our boss's family could get in. It's a wonderful opportunity, and I believe it's meant to be. Aroha, do you understand how difficult it is to get into that university? This doesn't sit well with me. I appreciate your concern, but I'm determined to pursue my education. Team's attempt to discourage Aroha. Aroha, think about it. Will you manage to strike a balance between your studies and career? You better choose one before the other one suffers. You already have a degree. What do you need this one for? Why risk your job for uncertain studies? I believe this is the path I'm meant to take. You know, many people don't make it through the first semester there. I've prayed about it, and I have peace. Wicked plans. We need to find a way to get rid of our Roha. She's been challenging the boss and causing problems. Let's gather evidence of her mistakes and present them to the boss. We will fabricate evidence if we have to. Or exaggerate small mistakes. The boss is not tech savvy hence, he'll believe whatever we tell him. Aroha, we've noticed some performance issues, and we've decided to nip it in the bud. If you are stuck, don't delay to ask for help. You tend to wait and try to resolve the issue instead of immediately asking for help. I've consistently met deadlines and exceeded targets. Is there any specific issue you can share? It's just not working out for us. Lord, you've brought me this far. I won't be discouraged by these challenges. I am with you, Aroha. Your faith will be your strength. Aroha's future prospects are a threat to the company's stability. She'll leave once she completes her masters, and we can't let that happen. I'll have to find a way to remove her. Good day, staff. Due to the economic recession, we regret to inform you that some positions will be eliminated to cut costs. This can't be good news. Aroha. Given the current circumstances, I'm afraid we have to let you go. I hope you understand it's purely due to the economic situation. I understand, but it's disheartening. I'm sure you'll find your way, Aroha. The HR manager starts handing out their retrenchment letters. Aroha, I'm sorry, but due to the economic situation, we have to let you go. And the company apartment. You'll need to vacate within three months. Lord Jesus, I don't know what to do. You're all I have, especially since losing my parents. Please, help me find a way through this. Aroha, I am with you through every storm. Remember, I am your provider and your comforter. Lord, they're trying to take everything away from me. 
I decree and declare that all of the plans of the enemy will fail, they'll never succeed instead everything will work in my favor, everything will work for my good in Jesus' name. The pits they dig for me, they'll surely fall into those pits. It is well with my soul. All is well in Jesus' name. Aroha, they can take material things, but they cannot take away my love for you. You've built resilience through challenges, and they will guide you through this too. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me of the blessings I still have. The company helped secure my residence here, I bought a lot of high-quality household property debt-free, and I have saved enough money to cover my final year's tuition fees. Yes, and I'll continue to open doors for you. With your blessings, my Lord, I intend to utilize this time to concentrate on my studies. I've managed to save sufficient funds to cover my tuition fees for my final year. Given that my family has graciously extended an invitation for me to stay with them, I plan to accept their offer, trusting that you will guide me towards the means to purchase my own house in the near future. Aroha, your determination is a testament to your faith. I'll provide for you every step of the way. Amen. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ. May your holy name be glorified now and forevermore. Landlord, I'll be giving you notice. I need to vacate the apartment within three months. I appreciate the notice. I hope everything is all right. The company has decided to let some of us go due to the economic recession and the new company structure. I'm taking a new path, and I trust it will lead to brighter days. Lord, thank you for giving me strength and guiding me through this transition. I know you have a purpose for me. Aroha, I am your strength, and I have great plans for you. Trust in me and keep moving forward. Aroha starts packing her things. The Royal Council Chamber is filled with family members and advisors, discussing the Prince's ascension. Prince Ari's actions have been questionable. We cannot trust his intentions to rule our kingdom. He's too reckless and doesn't understand our traditions. We can't let him become king. How dare he tries to usurp the crown, my inheritance from me. My son is ready to lead. He has a pure heart and the strength to bring prosperity to our land. My husband, the late king named Prince Teoriki is his successor. Also, my son has the support of the majority of the council members. It is his birthright to rule this kingdom. As for you Prince Matiu, you forfeited your right to the throne while your father was still alive. I will not allow you to usurp what rightfully belongs to my son, Prince Teoriki. Prince Arya sends the throne. Today, Prince Teoriki, fondly referred to as Prince Ari, was inaugurated as the new ruler of our nation. Following the passing away of his father, King Chotara III, the prince assumed the throne. Prior to his official ascent to the leadership of the esteemed T.E. Basilia Kingdom, the prince must fulfill a few remaining formalities and partake in traditional rites of passage. Congratulations my prince, I mean our new king. Long live the king. May the Lord increase your wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Meanwhile, at Aroha's family home, Aroha is watching the news on TV, and her face shows disbelief. What? No way. The man who was wooing me is the new king. Aroha does some research on King Ari's beliefs and lifestyle. Aroha, can you believe it? King Ari worships multiple gods, that is, the so-called gods of our land and our ancestors. He claims to be a Christian, he acknowledges God's sovereignty, but he also worships other gods. What? I thought he was different, but he's entangled in his traditions. And did you hear about his reckless past? He's not fit to lead. A month later, a team of spies infiltrates Aroha's apartment on the night she moves out. The Lord rescued Aroha from her potential kidnapping. The Lord utilized the job loss and being forced to vacate her apartment, to prevent Aroha from being abducted and coerced into a royal marriage.
Your Majesty, the guards attempt to kidnap Aroha Venturai. Useless palace guards. They can't even do a simple job. A series of unusual incidents unfolded. Initially, they encountered car problems. Our spies at the security estate inexplicably lost consciousness, coinciding with the young maiden's departure from the premises a few days earlier than anticipated. What? Those are just excuses. Notably, Aroha vacated her apartment just prior to the guard's arrival. I believe it's wise to approach the situation cautiously. Perhaps a higher power shielded her from abduction. As you know, I vehemently oppose the reprehensible act of abducting young women and coercing them into marriage. I am the king, and I will not tolerate a servant questioning my authority or attempting to instruct me on matters of morality. Depart this place immediately before you incite my anger. My aides failed to kidnap Aroha. She's proving to be quite elusive. My prince, I mean, my king, perhaps we should reconsider. No, I will not be defeated. I want her as my wife. At the Royal Native Doctor's Hut? Wise one, I seek your guidance. I am desirous of entering a matrimonial bond with a young lady named Aroha. I shall present to you her photographs and a selection of personal effects recovered by my attendants from her residence during their search. As a monarch, it is imperative for me to possess comprehensive knowledge about the woman who shall accompany me in the journey of life. Our inquiry aims to ensure the absence of substances such as alcohol, narcotics, adult paraphernalia, explicit literature, and similar items. While others might accommodate these facets, I hold an unwavering aversion towards them. King Ari, I must warn you. Aroha is a devout Christian. She will not submit to our gods or a man who doesn't follow her beliefs. You must be a 100% Christian and forsake all other gods in order for her to even consider dating you and let alone marry you. But I desire her. I will do whatever it takes to make her mine. Love should be built on respect and understanding. Forcing her may lead to misery. Nonetheless, I will do whatever it takes to help you, your majesty. That's more like it, great one. King Ari's reflection. The native doctor's words haunt me. Can I truly win Aroha's heart if I don't respect her faith? Will I be willing to forsake all other gods and solely worship the Lord Jesus Christ? What about the gods that guard my throne? What consequences await me if I abandon them? I must follow the path laid out by my ancestors, who were great kings. I cannot allow doubts to arise from a woman's influence and shake my faith in the guiding and protective forces that have been with me and my people since our kingdom's inception. I identify as a Christian, yet I also hold firm to ancient traditions. Why should I have to select one over the other? However, the Bible clearly states that we should worship only the Lord and no other gods. It's a matter of being completely devoted to Christianity or not. I cannot simultaneously serve God and material wealth, nor can I serve God and other deities. What course of action should I take? If I abandon the deities revered by my forebears, I might lose the crown, much like my half-brother Prince Mathieu. By clinging to age-old traditions, am I risking my chance of reaching heaven? Could this Aroha woman have been sent by the Lord to guide me? Until she entered my life, I had never encountered such doctrine. Even if someone briefly mentioned it before, they never spoke with such conviction. What steps should I consider? The allure of the throne exerts a powerful grip. I cannot become an ordinary person or relinquish my royal privileges like my half-siblings have. I need to meticulously weigh my options. However, I am determined to make that woman mine, regardless of the cost. Who would dare to refuse the king of the T. Basilea Empire? Thank you for tuning into this episode of Aroha. Watch out for the next episode. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, 
we encourage you to do so, ensuring you receive notifications whenever we release new content. As we wrap up, we'd like to offer you these verses for contemplation. We would like to share some Bible verses that offer comfort, hope, and encouragement for those facing oppression and injustice. Comfort and hope, Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41, 10, this verse assures us that even in difficult times, we should not be afraid because God is with us. It encourages us to trust that God will provide strength and help, upholding us with his righteousness. This reminder of God's presence offers comfort and courage in the face of adversity. Standing for justice, Micah 6, 8 says, He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God? Micah 6, 8, this verse highlights God's expectations for us to pursue justice, show mercy, and walk humbly with Him. It serves as a guide for how to respond to oppression and injustice by advocating for fairness, compassion, and humility, reflecting God's character in our actions. Support for the oppressed, Psalm 82, 3-4 says, Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Psalm 82, 3-4, these verses call us to defend and do justice for the vulnerable and oppressed. They remind us of our responsibility to stand up against wickedness and work to free those who are suffering under unfair circumstances, demonstrating God's heart for the downtrodden. God's love and care, Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalm 34, 18, this verse assures us that God is near to those who are broken hearted. It offers solace in times of pain, reminding us that God understands our struggles and is present to provide comfort and healing to those who are hurting. Overcoming Challenges, Romans 12 21 says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 21, this verse encourages us not to be overcome by evil, but to overcome evil with good. It advises responding to hatred and injustice with love and righteousness, serving as a guiding principle for navigating challenging situations while maintaining a positive and constructive approach. Strength and Weakness 2 Corinthians 12, 9 And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 these words remind us that God's grace is sufficient to sustain us even in times of weakness. This verse provides encouragement for those who feel inadequate or overwhelmed, assuring them that God's strength is made perfect in our vulnerabilities. These verses collectively offer hope, guidance, and strength to those facing oppression and injustice, encouraging them to seek justice, lean on God's support, and respond with love and righteousness. Let's conclude with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts heavy for those who are oppressed and suffering. We lift up those who are facing racism, sexism, corruption, unjust systems, and all forms of injustice. Give them strength, courage, and wisdom to stand up for their rights and the rights of others. May your comforting presence be with them, reminding them of your unfailing love and care. Grant them the strength to overcome challenges and the ability to find hope amidst adversity. Lord, empower us all to work towards justice and equality. Guide our actions and efforts as we strive to make the world a better place for all your children. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.